How's everybody doing? Good, good, yep, good. It was really powerful, but I feel like it's stuck here in my heart. It was moving, but it's stuck. <laughs> I was needed a little bit more time. That's okay. <laughs> the process is started and it will continue. So, because your body is slower. Energetically, the command is given. You've given the permission. So the process is started. Your body will take a little longer to integrate everything. And that's okay. Thank you, Vini. Thank you for sharing. Anything else? Any other comments, questions? Can I ask you? Yeah. Sure, go right ahead. Should I repeat this process? If you feel you need to, sure. Because um, each time you repeat it, because um, you may be ready to release, let's say, five or, or one or two um, implants this time. Next time you repeat, you repeat it, you may be ready to release more. So, yes. Okay, thank repeat you. Repeat this. Um, but don't do it tomorrow. It's too soon. Really give yourself, give your body time to integrate all the shift. And also notice the shift as well. So notice what has shifted. Because mm -hmm. once the, the implant is removed, um, you would think a little bit differently because you have more freedom. You're not blocked anymore. So you will notice, you may notice, not saying that you have to notice, but you may notice something different. So give yourself a few days or maybe a week and then repeat this again. Or this time you may also want to Instead of doing implants, do veils. Or if you want, if you feel like there's some really stuck emotions there, and then do a curse removal as well. So, but now you know the process, so you can do any of those. Okay, thank you. Um, any other comments, questions? If not, and then let's let's push on the next one. So the next one is really let's go back to root chakra. So what is the root chakra? The root chakra is really about our connection to this reality. Our connection. To this reality also meaning that our connection to the resources that are available to this reality. So um, then I actually want to talk a little bit about what is force matrix versus the organic matrix. So what is the force matrix? So force matrix um, really meaning the um, negative 3D matrix. So some of the hallmarks or the, 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 the more, most distinctive um, qualities of the force matrix is disconnection. We feel that we're disconnected with ourselves, we're disconnected with other people, we're disconnected with our environment. So all of these are really hallmarks of the, the negative um, 3D matrix, disconnection. So if you feel yourself being disconnected with your body, meaning that you don't like your body, you can't accept your body, you think that you know somehow there's something wrong with your body, then there's that disconnection. And if you feel that someone else is wrong, or if you feel that other that um, other people don't accept you or that you 
are always the um, black sheep of the family or that you are um, somehow different from other people, that you feel that you're not part of the group, then there that is disconnection from others. And that's also a hallmark of the false matrix and then environment. We, <laughs> we are so horrible to the environment. We don't think that you know, trees are a part of ourselves because it is. Trees are a part of ourselves. Um, animals are a part of ourselves. So that's why we eat them. We mistreat them. We beat them. We do horrible things to them. So, and not just to animals, but also to trees. We don't care about the, um, the, the, the forest. We, because we think that there is something that we can make money from wood that we would go and just destroy forests without thinking of what the, the, the results, what the ramifications of our actions are. So these are all dis, like these are really all disconnections. We don't feel that we are part of our environment. We um, the way that we I, I remember there's we mine coals, we mine different um, minerals. And we also um, mine oil. We get we try to get oil from the ground. But instead of using methods that are um, that really work with the environment, we use practices like fracking that really does so much harm to the environment. So it's not so much what we do and also how we do it as well. That is the hallmark of disconnection in the force matrix. And also within the force matrix, we learn through suffering. So in order to learn something, we have to, we have to suffer. We have to feel these negative emotions. So that's all hallmark of a force matrix. Um, so we don't have sovereignty. We have group dynamics. That's why there are hierarchies where there are kings and queens that has almost everything and um, other people have like most commoners have nothing, next to nothing that we have to beg for food and work and uh, all those things. So the group dynamics is all um, really out of balance. And also um, in the, the force matrix, um, we have very limited awareness as well. Our awareness is, is really mostly based on what we can see, hear, and touch. So it's really our five senses. We, our other senses, our higher senses are, are very limited, if any at all, if we have any at all. So limited awareness, and because of our limited awareness, it's because of the disconnection. When we are connected, then our awareness would start to become more and more heightened. And also addiction as well. So that's why we are addicted to food. We are addicted to alcohol. We are addicted to cigarettes. We are addicted to so many things because um, that is the hallmark of the force matrix. We are so emotionally unbalanced that we are prone to addiction because we don't feel that love because there is really that hole in ourselves. That's why we have to try to find something to fill it because somewhere within our unconscious mind, we still remember that love. 
but we don't feel it. We can't sense it. That's why we try to fill other things in order to um, get at that love that we remember, but we don't have it. So that is all force matrix. So what's the organic matrix hallmarks of the connect? Of the organic matrix is connection. We we know that we are one, even though we have separate bodies. We know that that person out there is just another version of me, even though we don't have. We're not the same body, we're not the same age, same race, same eyes, same thinking, but that is another version of me. So we are connected to others. We are connected to ourselves. We start to like our body. We take care of our body. We really do things in order to nourish and nurture our body. And also we feel that connection with the environment. And so our environment actually starts to um, work for us. So let's see. <clears throat> so connection. And also um, within the false matrix, we learn through suffering, whereas in the organic matrix, we learn through trial and error. We have the, the feeling that, yes, we did something and we did whatever we do, we do to the best of our abilities with what we know. And then once we've done something, we evaluate. So what did I learn through this action, this process? this activity or this experiment what what have i learned and then we because we care about ourselves others and our environment we start to ask questions like how can i improve moving forward so these are really the ways that we we learn we don't have to suffer we don't have to feel shame and beat ourselves up and say we're not good enough. We know ourselves because we, we're connected to ourselves. We love ourselves. We know ourselves. We are sure of ourselves and we trust ourselves. So we, when we do something, we do it to the best of what we can. And then we evaluate what we have learned and how to improve and how to moving forward as well. So that's that's the learning style of the organic matrix. And within the organic matrix, we know that we are sovereign spirit. So <clears throat> instead of having hierarchies, we know that we are sovereign. And does not mean that we just create whatever it is that we want. We don't care how it impacts others. Because we also are connected to other people, we know and accept others as a part of ourselves. And when we create, even as a sovereign spirit, we create things that is going to support everyone, not just ourselves. So the way we create, the way we interact with one another is out of respect for ourselves and for others. So that's what a softened spirit is. And also we have expanded awareness because we are connected to ourselves and to others and to our environment. We can actually look out in the environment and the environment will communicate with us things that we may not know in this moment. So it, we naturally would be able to expand our own awareness. And the more time we spend on connecting with in ourselves and also communicating with others and our environment, the more we can expand our awareness <clears throat> until we get to the point where we know everything. 
So, and also there's no attachment as well. We understand that we are sovereign spirit. We understand that we are actually spirit. We are not our body. We have a body. We have a character, but we are not attached to our character. We can learn. And so we're not attached to emotions, people, places, things, ideas. We are free to learn and free to reimagine ourselves. And that's why also that we don't have to um, live only 80 years, 50 years or 100 years. We can actually live much longer lifetimes without feeling being bored that we're repeating the old things because we are free to adapt. We are free to reimagine ourselves. That's why life, like time after time, no matter how many hundreds of years, we can keep on reinventing ourselves and keep it interesting. So it actually is um, part of the reason why when we get into fifth dimension that we don't have to rely on death process in order to um, get ourselves out of situations that become that has become bored and tired and stuck so those are the difference between false matrix and organic matrix um, any questions before i continue okay I'm going to keep on going. <clears throat> so what supports the force matrix? This connection, I, I mentioned that this connection. So how do we know we're disconnected? When you have feelings like I have to fight the government, the system, Russia, China, USA, as long as you have to fight something then you know that there is a disconnection. Or if you feel that I can't make enough money or I can't meet the love of my life or I can't find a place to live or I can't, you know, see, when you feel that you somehow you cannot um, create what is the best life that you want to live, then you know that you have some um, remnants of the force matrix still within you. When you don't accept your face, your body, your voice, or your life, whatever it is that within yourself, you don't accept. Also, there are things within you that um, are still supporting the force matrix. Also, um, so when you look outside, if you don't accept the world as it is right now, or if you don't accept um, someone else the way they, that they are now. So all of these are really beliefs, thinking that are still supporting the force matrix. So if you don't have enough energy, time, resources, if you're not happy with your life, if you somehow believe that you know money is hard, uh, money does not grow on trees, it's hard to find money, and life is hard, everything is hard. So you know that, you know, the force matrix still have you in its grip. So how do you integrate the organic matrix within you then? So um, one of the things that I would highly suggest is realize that how you feel about what is outside of you is actually a reflection of how you feel within. So anything that you you cannot accept outside, you know that there is something within yourself that you cannot accept. So what's within and is what's without. What is outside of you is a reflection of 
what is within you. So having this understanding, really have this understanding. And also um, the other, some of the other ways to integrate the organic matrix is to really let go of judging. Good, bad, thick, thin, you know, short, tall, let go of judging labels and ask yourself, why do I think this is good or bad? Or bad? So seek to understand, seek to understand yourself. And also if someone else make judgments, try to understand why they have that judgment. So instead of um, judging them for their judgments is to understand why, why, what makes them have this opinion, have this judgment. And um, be comfortable with making mistakes because when you are comfortable making mistakes, you actually become comfortable with yourself as well because we are human beings, we are not perfect. We will be making mistakes, lots of mistakes. If you don't like, if you don't feel comfortable making mistakes, then it actually stops you from taking action and you're gonna be slowed down by that. So don't be afraid to make mistakes. So give yourself permission to make mistakes. And, and also some of the questions or some of the ways to determine what it is that within yourself that is still hanging on or still um, falling in the category of the false matrix. So, so what, what is within you that is still old furniture that is supporting the false matrix? So just consider these sentences. Life is brilliant and full of pleasure. And so just take this one sentence and just really take it in. And when you ask yourself this, whatever it is that's within your mind that's not agreeing with the sentence, just write it out. So those are the things that is... Um, really belong to the false matrix. And the next sentence is, I love myself completely now. And whatever it is, thinking, sensation, judgment that comes up after you have considered this, I love myself completely now statement, those are the things that you can work on or if you choose to, let go off. So, so these are just a sample of um, things that when you are fully integrated into the organic matrix, it would be easy for you to just feel that these are true within yourself. So there are other sentences. This is just these, these uh, five sentences are just five of the examples. What I would suggest is to um, ask yourself these questions, these statements, these statements, and find out what within you that's disagreeing with them and just write them out and then use what you know already now to clear them out. So, so you or you all of you now, um, you already know ways to clear past life and present life um, programs. So, if you are not sure, then look at um, Play Shop review Play Shop um, number fifteen that is talking about how to release past life and also present life those those two kind of programs so 
you have you have tools already and other tools that you already know is to strengthen your um, central meridian and strengthen your kundalini because those two are really your the energy centers you're bringing in um, higher frequency from the central meridian and you also um, being more connected to the to the um, to Mother Earth when you are doing the the Kundalini and also Central Meridians. So those are play shop seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen. I think I think um, seventeen and eighteen are more just explaining and also um, getting to harmonize. And then play shop number 19 is to merge the two. So those are the, the those you can refer back to. Those are the things that you can, you already know that you can start to use to integrate the fifth dimension, experience more within yourself. Any other, any questions so far? I was in the, in the illusion that I'm an organic matrix, but after your list, I know that I'm in a false matrix. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, uh, I have lots of work to do too. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know we we think we are in the organic, but you know, um, yes, we we have work to do, and we have time to do it. And also the energy is very supportive now. It's much easier to let go of things now. It used to be way harder. Now it's much easier. So I would really highly suggest every one of you, should you want to make this transition faster and easier, is to really um, make it a practice. Maybe not a daily practice, but you know, at least a weekly practice of just setting out a time um, on the weekend or whenever it is that you don't have, when, when you can clear your schedule to just sit down and just, you know, check in and say, hey, how do I feel about life now? Do I love my life? If you don't, then what about your life you don't love? So just write down. So those are the things that you know you need to clear. Then clear past life, clear present life, and also um, clear implants, clear uh, veils, uh, curse, curses as well. Um, also strengthen the central meridian and kundalini. And also, of course, if you have any aches and pains, any anything wrong with your body, um, oh, so in the, the I think there are some place, there are other play shops that we've already done, that is about healing the body. So review those to to as 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 you see fit, in order to start to heal your body, and at the very least, even without reviewing any of those things, any part of your body that you want to heal, you just put your attention in that part of your body and just talk, just, just talk to your body. And when I say talk to, I don't mean you know, that you necessarily need to use words or need to hear words from your body. Just set the intention that you want to pay attention to your body that particular part of your body, let's say for me, it is you know, right here in my chest area. So you just place your attention there and just feel how you feel there. Does it feel absolutely fine and happy or do you feel inflammation or do you feel any, any kind of sensation that you are not sure about? And then just Put your attention there because that's all your body needs is just attention. It knows how to heal itself already. 
So all you have to do is give it attention and also um, ask yourself before you eat anything is, is this, is this food good for me? Good for my vibration before you eat something. So this is um, root. This, this one is really about the root uh, chakra because the root chakra is how we connect. It's about connection. How do we connect to Mother Earth? How do we connect to ourselves? How do we connect to what we are here to do? So it's all about connection. It's about nurturing ourselves. When we are stuck in our root chakra, then all of these questions will come up. And in um, future um, play shop, I would really focus on, I think next week I'm, I want to focus on money. So money is a resource. So I'm going to still work on more about root chakra as well. But this, this week, because root chakra, connecting to ourselves, connecting to earth, to mother earth is actually a a big, big um, project. It's not something that can be done in one day or even one week or even one year. It may take longer. But actually, probably most likely not because right now the energy is really supportive. If you really um, set aside time each week to do just a little bit of it, then I'm quite sure within a year's time, or maybe even less than that, how long I cannot tell you because it's you. You, um, you are guiding yourself. You, you are guiding yourself. So you will know when you check in to say, am I, do I have everything that I want? Do I feel abundant? Do I love my life? Do I love myself? Do I love this reality, this world? When you can really say yes with enthusiasm, then you know that it's done. Then you know that you've integrated that. And, that, and even if that takes a couple of years, <laughs> it is still worth doing. It's... Just do one little bit at a time um, and do the work. Then you know, if in a few years time, you can say enthusiastically and excitedly that I love my life, isn't that worth it? I mean, I've been working on this for many years now. And, and now that we have so many tools and the energy is so supportive. All we need to do is actually just start this integration. And the future is going to be magnificent. So any questions, comments before we do our final meditation? So how this strengthen <clears throat> Central Meridian and Kundalini, we just have to connect. Um, um. So the, the so you breathe in pure love. So this so breathe so um, go through the go through the so um, when you go I, I think I sent you guys the um, the um, the slides as well is so it's so that you know what are the different um, like like. So where is the, the, the first central meridian? The first energy center is eight inches above and then four inches. So just go through each of the, the, um, each of the energy center and just breathe in pure love and just feel, feel as well, feel. And when you strengthen it, you actually feel that there is this, energy tube this this prana tube prana tube they call it the prana tube from the top of your head 
right on top of your head and it goes all the way through the um like between your legs you can actually feel that when it is strong okay it's and is this is the central yep that's the central meridian and then the chakra is the kundalini it's so going on the spine Kundalini is um, from the base of the spine. So where your perineum is, that's the first chakra. You go all the way up uh, to the third eye and then to the, um, it's the, it's where all the, all your, the bones of your head come together. So it's a little bit to the back. It's not right on top, right on top. It's a central meridian. So a little bit to the back where all the bones of your head come together, you can actually feel that there is a dip there in your skull. That's where the, the um, seventh chakra is. So when you move energy from earth up, it's 0 0.01 frequency energy. According to your picture, what you show us like previous times, um, it was Kundalini was a little bit on the back on our yes, it's spine. closer to the spine. And yes. then it go like from the neck, it go here and then up, right? Correct. Yes. So at first, really just if you if you don't feel that your kundalini is flowing very well, then um, at first just focus on one. And then when you actually feel it there. Then you move on to the next one and then the next one and the next one. And when you actually, um, when it is strong, then you can actually just feel the energy moving there. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Okay. Thank you. So let's do the final meditation. This one is a root chakra um, clearing meditation. 